Good evening and welcome to Tea Time. Everybody, welcome to Tea Time. I'm so glad you're joining me tonight. Yet yeah, is Monday and it's eight o'clock. It is the last Monday of March already. Can you believe this? It is the 27th. Um, I'm going to talk about my weekend real quick and then get to my guest. Friday night, I went into the city with my good friend Ralph Bracco. They were doing Murdered by the Mob. I was not an understudy that night, but Ralph and I actually had an in-person audition for a TV series. I'm very excited about it. Um, it was the first live in-person audition since COVID, and I wasn't nervous at all. I was just very, very, very excited to be there and to do it. And you do it, and then you just have to forget about it. So my new mantra is let let go and let God. That's it. That's my new mantra. I just put it in his hands and whatever's going to happen is going to happen, people. I cannot sweat over this. Um, Saturday, I was so exhausted from Friday night <laughs> because it was a cast member's birthday and we ended up hanging out at a bar and I didn't get home until like 1.30 in the morning. So Saturday, I was like out of it. I just needed to rest and that's what I did. And then Sunday, yesterday, my friend Doreen came over for Bayside. We had a lovely dinner at New Way Seafood, which is one of my favorite places in Wanta. And Wanta, Wanta, I don't want to sound like a real New Yorker. And, um, and then I came here for limo talk with the guys. So thanks to Rich and Graz and Bobby. Um, I had a great time, and I love being here with them on a Sunday. And Bobby bought his Sphinge, Sphinge, Sphinge. I hope I'm saying it right, pastry, and it was really good. We all got to taste it. All right, so listen, I'm going to get to my guest. As you can see, it's Jerry Landy is not with me. Unfortunately, Jerry um, uh, took ill, and he couldn't make it out here. So um, we're going to reschedule him, and I don't know, either he'll come on next week or the week after. Not sure yet, but to my left, I have a very good friend of mine. She's a comedian. She's also a writer because she writes her own stuff. You know, it's not like, you know, some people pay people, but, you know, she writes her own original material. Emily Santosis is sweet. Hello, Emily. Hey. How are you? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I'm great. I am so glad you're here bailing me out because um, I, we, you and I have talked many times about you coming on the show. Well, I'll be your Jerry. Yeah, you can be my Jerry. <laughs> I used to be Joe, so it's close. I mean, it's because with a J. Yeah, let's just jump into I it. I could be Jerry. Um, yes, you you mentioned you could have been Joe. And the, I was. You, well, here's the truth. The truth is that you are a transgender comedian. Yes. Transgender person. Yes. And you happen to do comedy. Yes. And, you know, I was, let's start out with the easy stuff first. I like easy. Let's hear okay. it. Okay. Um, originally, you're from Glen Cove. Yep. Right? You went to Glen Cove High School? Uh, yes. Yes? Why? Yeah. Did you go to another high school, too? No, I... Well, uh, you just stopped going to school. I pretty much just stopped, yeah. <laughs> I did. I went back and got my GED. Okay. Uh, I left school. I worked. I, uh, school was... You know, I would skip school. Some people are not meant for school. No, but the funny thing was, is like I would skip it. Yeah. But I'd read the books, and then I would go in, and I'd take the test, and I'd get 100, and the teacher would be pissed. I'm like, why are you pissed? You're such a good teacher. I don't even need to be here. Right. You're that good. They don't like that answer. Wow. Um, but yeah, I was just being cooped up for that long was not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like ADHD before ADHD was like a thing. 
right? So like I just couldn't be there. It's like eight hours a day. I'm like oh my yeah, god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would cut out. We go like every period. Like one friend's like, I'm going to the pizzeria. I'm like, all right, I'll go. I'm going here. Like, right, I'll come with you. I got the record for the most cuts. Really? But my school, my you know, good grades, and just uh, never showed. Yeah, no, I get it. So I it's totally a GED, it. and then I um, yeah, actually signed up to go back to school uh, recently. You did? I start April third. Really? Where are you going? Uh, it's an online university. Okay. So and I, I work you, for what do you study? A dealership. Uh, it's a bachelor's in business in business administration. Okay. All right. Yeah, you know, I just I always wanted to go, and I never did, because when I was young, I was stupid, as young people are. Yeah. Um, and what do they say? Youth is wasted on the young. So true. And I wanted to have fun. I wanted to go out and hang out and do shit stuff. Yeah. Oops. I'm banned for <laughs> Don't life. Don't worry. It'll be edited. Okay. Thank you, Bobby. <laughs> so I, uh, I, I just did all the fun stuff. Yeah. And and then I, you know, got into the car business and been doing that for a long time. Yeah. Over 20 years you're in the car industry. Yeah. 27 where I am now. So so listen, you you mentioned how. Listen, you were you were born male. Yes. And you tried to do all the traditional things. Marry um, twice. Know, yeah. Pe people I grew do. up like my family wasn't overly religious. Like, you know, I went to I went to religion after school and yeah. I had my first communion. Right. And, you know, we were there, we didn't go to church, you know. But we were religious in Yeah. Some kind of term. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you get those values, like, instilled in you, and you try to do the right thing, and, you know, what's moral, and, you know, and all that stuff. And, you know, I tried. I did. I really right. did. I went yeah. into both marriages <laughs> uh, with the best of intentions. Yeah, two marriages. You wanted to try to have that normal I, I, I did. I did. life that everyone uh, has. Well, because it's, you're surrounded by it. Well, that's the whole thing. And when I was growing up, there was no internet, really. It was an infancy. So, uh, internet started, like, I remember AOL, but I was... 19 or 20. Right. So I didn't, like when I was a kid, Yeah. like I knew I liked girly things. I did like makeup and dresses. And when no one was around, I'd play with that stuff. Okay. And then one day I come home from school. Right. But, but as, a, as, a, as a boy, were you attracted to men or women at that point? I, I really wasn't attracted. I, I didn't. Well, just both. Both. But women, generally, I dated women mostly. Right, right. So, but at that point, I was still trying to figure out who I was. Right. Not who I wanted. Right. Like I said, I came home from school one day and Donahue was on. Do you remember Donahue? Yeah, I used to watch him all the time. Oh, I didn't. But I come home from school one day and he's on. He's interviewing some woman. And for whatever reason, I just watched. Right. Right? He was there. And her name was Caroline Cossie. Or is Caroline Cossie. Her name is Tula. She's got a nickname, I guess. And she says that she's transgender. And like, as soon as I heard that word, I was just like... I'm like, a light, that's... It was a light bulb moment for Because I didn't have... There was no computers back then. Right. Nobody talked about it. Right. Nobody I knew was. Right. I everything come to find was, out... Everything was re really hidden. Yeah. And really not talked about or discussed. And if you did anything, you had to do it on the sly. Well, yeah. I had I, another girl who I went to school with that was assigned male at birth. I found it after it was trans. We always had the one like gay kid in class, and you knew he was gay. Yes. He was on fire, yes. basically. Yes, I did too in high school. Yeah. Yes. So you knew that. Yeah. But like when trans wasn't a thing then. Yeah. It was a thing we didn't talk about it. Right. So when I, I saw that interview, I was like, wow, that's me. Finally, at that point, I could put a name to what I was feeling. Right. So I took the bus to the mall to Walden Books, ordered a book. Uh-huh. I think it was called My Life. Yeah. I went back next week when it came in. I read it, and I'm like, yeah, that's it. But again, now I'm 12 now. About Yeah, you Didn't young. do anything about it. Yeah. Because, you know, I was nervous. I was scared. Yeah. So you would hide, and you'd dress up, and you'd hang out with your friends and do it. You know, a couple of friends I was close to. Mm. But never couldn't live that life because that wasn't, wasn't a life you could live. Yeah. So I got married. Had a kid. Right. Got divorced. Right. Got married again. Right. Had another kid. Yeah. Got divorced. It's a pattern here, I know. Right. And now, you know, I'm just me. And hey, I did it twice, but I only had one kid. <laughs> oh, anyway, I got two, but I got two beautiful kids, so. Yeah. I make, I make, a, I don't have, like, the best self-opinion of myself. I make a good-looking kid. <laughs> well, you know, you know, I've never seen you as a man, obviously, but I think you're a beautiful woman. You could if I could show you. you uh <laughs> I could. You want to see? I'll show you now. Uh, no, you don't have to show us. And, right. and, and, you know, and I'm sure a lot of people are wondering at home, so I'm going to ask you, what surgeries have you had? Uh, so if you couldn't hear it by now, well, I I know that you had surgery on your vocal yeah, cords, I have surgery and on you vocal had cords. a very very deep. male deep yes. voice, and I know that it bothered you a lot. A lot. 
And instead of going for voice lessons and trying which to... Which you did. Which you did. But did. Again, it's not for everyone, and it's very also hard to control. And also, it is. always keep it in your head. It's like me... It's like work. ...saying yeah, talk it. instead of talk. You know what I'm saying? And get rid of that accent. Uh, it only does so much. And um, no matter what I did, how hard I tried... Right. Sometimes you put on like that giddy, happy type voice. Right. But I would get called Sarah on the phone. I would say my name is Emily. Right. They'd be like, hi, who's this? I'm Emily. Okay, Sarah, how are you? Right. I'm like, yeah. I just told you my name yeah. is Emily. Yeah, yeah. Do you know any guys named Emily? Yeah. No. Like, no. no. Say, so what makes you think you just met one? Right. So it was a mental thing. I would be outside with friends. Well, I, and now your voice is very sexy and raspy, well, like, which, I, I you know, we that, thought yeah. after a year it might change, but we well, think it's gotten this is stronger it. and better. Oh, oh, no, yeah. It was really, really, really weak and low when you first had it done. Yeah, but I think this is probably it. But I, um, it was, I would go out with friends, and I could look the part. Now I could, you know, you look at me. Yes. But I'd be, like, afraid to... Speak. Like, I could talk to you silently, but if I had to yell, mm -hmm. you could tell. Right. And that really kind of held me back. Yeah. So I had that surgery. Yes, that was you did. September 21. Yeah. When I started my journey 10 years ago, I had a facial feminization surgery where they mm -hmm. like drill some bone down like under the eyebrow because men have, it's called like brown bossing. There's like a deeper orbital ridge. Right. And a little nose work. But the rest of it was cute and fine. <laughs> uh, and I had a boob job. At that yes, point. you got beautiful boobies. Yeah. Well, actually, the funny, I, uh, I first had implants. And I got silicone implants, and they were under the muscle. So those things didn't move for nothing. Wow. Like, I could run without a... Uh, it, was, right, it was fine. Right, right. But then something went wrong. I was getting infections about five years ago. It's scary. It was. And I've come to realize that the, or the implants that I got were causing, like, this very specific, rare kind of cancer in women. <gasps> like a closed cell, something... Well, don't they say they get saline? Well, yeah, safer? but these were newer... Um, textured round implants that had like a gummy bear type texture so even if it ruptured it wouldn't spill okay but it turns out that the textured ones were causing these issues okay so I woke up one day and I'm like oh yeah my neck is so sore must have slept wrong I get into the bathroom I look in the mirror and literally my boob looked like a watermelon it was coming up to like my oh chin. my gosh like it was moving or something it was just big. It was it was a infection. Wow. wow. So I went back and forth with the insurance company for a couple of months, mm -hmm. going get an aspiration, get the fluid out. What mm -hmm, is it? Mm -hmm. And my doctor finally convinced them. So I ended up what's getting called like a D flap, where they cut you open down here. You pretty much get a tummy tuck at the same time, so it's like a twofer. Oh, that's cool. It was, <laughs> um, and they cut out the tissue from here and they right. transplant it. Right, right. So I got a lot of jokes out of it. Good jokes. Wow. Too. Awesome. So now it's my tissue, so there's no yeah. implants, no foreign bodies. Right, that's good. So, um, and now they're all jiggly, which is awesome. That's good. Um, but now without a bra, they're like, <laughs> they're all over the place. <laughs> so, and I run a lot, so I gotta strap them down. Um, so yeah, so it's, a, it's, it's been a journey. It's, so it's, you so you've had top surgery and yeah. vocal. Yeah. Do you plan on getting any other surgery? I do, but the funny thing about that is when I started, 10 years ago, this 11, journey. Yeah. I was rip-roaring, I'm going to have that in a year, bottom surgery, to, to spell it out. Right, right, right. And the longer I go yeah. without having it, right. the less important it is. I'm still going to have it, but it doesn't define me. Society you know, doesn't see I'm it. I'm so glad you said that out loud because I have a cousin who was born female, mm -hmm. and she transitioned to male. Mm -hmm. She uh, went to get her breasts removed, and she and to to look at her now, you would you would never know, yeah. never know. Him, sorry, I apologize. I'm I sorry, I'm sorry, cause um, to look at him now, you would never. She's know. a good egg. She didn't mean it. No, I didn't. I I did. I no. She, he knows that. Um, it's just so hard, and I'm sure you had this issue with your family when you know mm -hmm. someone most their life, I, as as Danielle and as a female, and then all of a sudden. She becomes Mason, and again, it's hard to put that new name in your head. The longer you know someone, I, I, I will say this, though. My siblings, my brother, and my sisters, they, they were good. My brother was a little difficult. It's more difficult with men. Yeah. They would all, they all wonder, like, why would you give up being a man? It's the most awesome thing for you. Well, we're going to um, talk about the difference, too. We're going to get into that also. But my mom, though, Yeah. I got to tell you, in 11 years, so now, she hasn't skipped a beat. Not once. Right. She's so good. Yeah. She calls me. She's like, this is my daughter. I mean, she yeah, is that's just great. 
She's amazing. She's yeah. amazing. She's the best. I'm so glad. I'm so happy about that, really, because it's. I love you, Mom. But just saying. Nothing, nothing. My whole thing is what's between your legs should not define you. No, but you also got to understand. It's true. It's, it shouldn't matter. We shouldn't be judged by what's between our legs in any aspect of life, including your job, which you've had both yes. spectrums of, of how you've treated as a man and how you're treated as a woman. Yeah, big difference. And, and it's a big, big difference. But you got to understand that it's not about how you're judged. It's about how you see yourself. Yes. So for some yes. people, there are some trans girls right. who don't want hormones or don't have surgeries. And, that, and that's the way they live their life. And that's totally fine. Right. Whereas I'm um, halfway and I'm comfortable in my body right now. Right. And eventually I'll get it done. Yeah. And some, they got to have it done right away. Yes. And it's all about how you feel about yourself. Forget what other people think about you. Right. Um, I mean, that does play into well, your because, psyche. Well, you that's know? what I'm thinking. Is, is it because in their mind they feel like they'll be more complete? Yeah. That, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a thought. Um but every like like you, everyone's journey is different, and, and any woman, everybody's different. Yeah, yeah, everybody's different. Well, on that note, that everyone's different, we have to take my first break. But we come back. We have so much more to talk about with Emily. So don't go away. We'll be back after this. Teresa, it's John York from General Hospital. I am just checking in because apparently you have a great talk show called Tea Time on Strong Island TV. I want you to have continued great success and have a lot of fun. It sounds like you're having a lot of fun, and that's pretty much the key to everything, isn't it? So continued success. I'm proud of you. Have a great day, Teresa. Bye. Hey everyone, thank you for tuning in tonight to my show. Uh, everyone's loving my new set. Thank you, Bobby LaSara, because we got rid of the green screen thing and now we have this going on and everyone's loving it and I appreciate everyone. You know, we're on every Monday night live here at beautiful Paradise Studios in Massapequa, but if you ever want to come down on a Thursday night or Friday night, we're here. Thursday night is live band. Uh, you can get up and sing with the band. Friday night we do open mic. You could get up, you could do a monologue, you could do a, a comedy. We've had an author come and read from his book. Um, it's just a really cool place to hang out on a Friday night. If you're not you know, doing anything, just come on down. And I did want to say at the beginning of the show, which I forgot because I was so excited that Emily's here, today is World Theatre Day. And I was in many plays over the years. Bobby's going to put up some pictures. That was West Side Story. There I am in the floral dress. Can't miss me. I was a shock girl. Nice. Um, but yeah, that was West Side Story. And that's um, Once Upon a Mattress, which was based on Princess and the Pea. And I played Lady Rowena. And Bobby's just going to throw them up. That's another one. And yeah. And that was uh, Bye Bye Birdie. I got to be in Bye Bye Birdie, which was... Uh, I love to dance, sing, and act, people. What can I tell you? I'm a triple threat. I'm like J-Lo without her behind her money. There's Bat Boy, a Yankee Miracle. I play three parts. That's, uh, yep, yeah, that's me again. I got three different wigs on and three different characters that I do. Love it, love it, love it. Yeah. And that's me in Murdered by the Mob. And I've also done um, Grease, Fiddle on the Roof. Thank you, Bobby. There I am again. Uh, pajama game, um, yeah, so uh, today again, World Theater Day, so uh, if you haven't been to the theater lately, go. The last show I saw was Between Riverside and Crazy with Common, and it was amazing, so get to the city and see a Broadway show. 
I want to support local theater because I think it's so important. So I'm with Emily Santosis. She is a comedian. She's a writer. She's a friend of mine. She is funny, funny, funny. We um, actually, um, Bobby's going to put up that picture of Emily and I. We just did a show um, March 4th together. Kathy Arnold and I produced a show um, at Governor's Comedy Club, and um, you were on it, and you kicked butt, girl. She yeah, kicked butt. You know, a lot of her comedy is based on her life and what she's gone through, especially being trans. You know, you're very, um, your comedy is very raw, but it's funny. It's in your face and, um, you know, and you don't, you don't play around with it, but you make it funny where people are accepting it and you could feel it in the crowd. Like when you first start off, you could feel a little tension in the room. Tiny bit. Yeah, just a tiny bit, like, oh, crap. Well, it's my, a little surprising at first. It's a little it's... surprising, because I have to say, um, uh, my accountant was there, actually, and he was saying, you know, that, that, that woman was hysterical, but I, would, I, would, I didn't, if, I would, if she didn't say anything, I wouldn't have known. And he thought you were great. I just saw him. I just did my taxes the other day. And I says, I'm going to let her know that. Thank you. And, um, but yeah, obviously you, you grab your material from what you've been through and what you've been through, including working in the car dealership industry for over 20 years, <laughs> what uh, was transitioning and seeing firsthand the difference of how a woman gets treated on the job compared to a man. And not many people can say that, but how has that affected you? How did your coworkers react to this? And what's the biggest difference? I mean, because obviously they can't say, oh, you're, you know, you're a woman now and we're going to cut your pay because you've been there for over 20 years. Yeah. So I would hope that they can't touch, you know, yeah, no, your, uh, you know your wage. Yeah. No, that's a side note before we get into that. Uh, I was in theater too. I was in Inca. Oh, yeah, cool. just a generic Inca. All right. Um, way back in high school, <laughs> I had to get put the stuff all over my body. I had to clean myself off with alcohol. There's nothing like live theater. Nothing. Yeah, no, it was it's fun. the best. I got killed uh, three, three nights in a row. I got killed. Uh, so I'm on my sixth life now. Uh, so, yeah, so that was fun. And that's my stint in my in yeah. the theater. Yeah. Uh, although this is like theater. You it know, is. You're comedy. alive. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, anyway, uh, your question. No, no, you can't do that. That's a, hey, it's illegal. Um, but um, aside from that, it's we talked before about how you feel about yourself yes. and what's important to you about what you do with your body. But you don't live in a vacuum. You know, you live in the world, and and a lot of people take issue with what I did, and a lot of people are cool with it. And you don't know how society is going to react. Right. And things are different. Mm. And just women get treated differently than men. Right. Some of it's good. Some I remember one guy cursed around me, and he's like, "Oh, I'm sorry, miss." I'm like, "It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> talking to me." Yeah, right. Um, hold the door. You'll think things like that, you know, which is is cute and nice, right, and fun. Um, and they're a little more respectful uh, around me uh, sometimes. Um, and sometimes it's assumed that you don't know what you're talking about or that mm -hmm. at one point you're judged on your work and now you're judged on how you look right like oh you look great today you never like oh good job on that report you know it's it's right, a, it's right. it's different yeah i'm not saying it's bad right but it's it's different yeah and, and i got a lot of girlfriends now and we talk and I can tell you the one phrase I've heard a million times over is, and you could probably guess it, you get used to it. Yeah. Because you have. From the day you're born right. and you grow up right. with it, with boys and all mm -hmm. this stuff. Mm -hmm. It's and just normal. Yeah, yeah. But it's not normal to me. Right. And I got a crash course in that stuff. Right. Um, see, I, I adapted because I would have cursed a second right, ago. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got a crash course in that stuff. Yeah. And I don't like it. Yeah. I don't like it at all. Yeah. And I fight. Did you did you go to your boss and tell him what you planned on doing so you didn't like just walk in one day and It wasn't a surprise. It wasn't a surprise. Uh -huh. But I will say this. I left work one day and I came back two weeks later as Emily. Really? Yeah, so um culture shock. You know, for yeah. everybody, not just me. Okay, so you didn't just announce it to everyone. No, no, uh but people knew. Okay. You know, people knew. Right. Um and like there's like there was like a lead up to it. Yeah. 
like at one point, like I showed you a picture. Yeah. I had like the beard and everything, and I had a full French manicure. Right. I had some awesome nails. I still do, actually. <laughs> yes, you do. Um, and the girls would be like, oh my God, I'm so jealous. Yeah, yeah. Because guys, I think, have stronger nails. Yeah. So I guess I got to keep that. Right. So I'm cool with that part. <laughs> I'm fine with that. Thank well, you. Well, women are um, very high maintenance, as you found out as well. You know, we pluck, we shave, we tweeze, we wax. Oh. I mean, there's a lot of maintenance from head to toe. Don't. Because A, two things. One, it costs way more to be a woman. Way more. So yes, because we accessorize. Oh yeah, and carry pocketbooks. But yeah, not even that. Like you know, freaking Louis Vuitton. Uh, but hair, makeup, nails, skin, you name it. It's you know, I got, I got a seventy dollar manicure. Right. I got a thirty dollar pedicure. Right. I got a four hundred dollar dye job Girl, on my I hair. I gotta take you where I go because the mani and pedi's like thirty five. Let's go. Yeah. But the waxing thing. Yes. So I went to Vegas last week. Uh huh. And I was in Vegas last year, and it was hot, and it was warm. Yeah, it's very hot. And you could be by the pool. This year it rained, whatever. Yeah. So I'm figuring, okay, I got a bathing suit. It fits. I lost a decent amount of weight. Right. So I'm going to go get waxed. Mm. Mm. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a painful memory. It is. So I went last week. Last, yeah, there's last nothing Saturday. like putting hot wax on your body and ripping it off. Yeah, but it depends on where. Yes, it does, underarms, but it's still sensitive. Hello. It is. I'm used to the underarms now. It's like, shh, yeah. I'm done. Okay. So I go in, and I'm like, you know, we're going to do it all. Yeah. And she did. And I didn't shave before mm -hmm. or cut it because right. I didn't know. Right. So she goes, you didn't, you didn't shave? I go, no. She goes, oh, girl, this is going to hurt. Yeah. And I got to be honest, I was so nervous because I was like stark naked. <laughs> and I'm like doing this. And she's like, so she made me feel comfortable. Right, so right. Anna, shout out. You're awesome. <laughs> so, um. So she rips the first thing off, and I swear to God, that strip looked like a fur glove. Oh, it's God. like, and then seeing stars. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. And then she's like putting the pressure down, and that's not helping. So she, she does everything, and I didn't pull tight enough, so something went with her. That was not fun. And then she did in the back. And... <laughs> I'm, I'm really reliving this right now. No, I don't want you to relive it. I don't want you to relive I, I'm just, it. I'm just letting you know, like, if you've never done it before, just let me ask you a question because a lot of women, and this is a, this is a good question for women, a lot of women wear the wrong size bra. So did you yourself, they say you should go professionally get fitted to know what size you wear. I went That's to Blum's because they're really good. You know, someone told me to go there too. Blum's is good. But that was a while ago, and that was when I had the implants. Right. So I haven't been back, but... Um, because I lost all that weight, yes. I can actually buy a bra from Victoria's Secret. So yes, you, you know, you and I talked about that. I, I had put on like 20 pounds before COVID and then 20 during COVID. So I got the 40 off and then a little bit, a little bit more. Now I'm like up 10. I'm like, I'm always struggling with my weight people. It's, it's not it's, easy. It's a, no, but you look, look fantastic. How much weight did you lose total? Uh, from my highest, I'm um, down 70 pounds. It's amazing. And I started, when I started really concentrating, that was March of last year. Right. And from then till now, right. I'm down 55. Yeah. And from 3X to a medium. That's amazing. No, it's amazing. I feel great. And it's, it's fun to go shopping and it's easier. It is easier. because the plus size section, not yeah, very imaginative. No. The regular section is great. In fact, I went to Macy's a couple weeks ago. Yeah. I go to INC. Uh huh. Uh, and I love their clothes, fashionable, not yeah, crazy yeah. expensive. But they're like either true to size or maybe a little on the small side. Yeah. So I grab an extra large and a large jumpsuit. I go in a dressing room. Extra large is too big. Large is too big. So now um, I have dueling emotions. I'm mad because I have to get dressed to go, go back get out. To get I know. I but hate happy that, that I have to go back out. Yeah, yeah. And get a medium. So that's awesome. That's cool. Um, plus, I go to the gym a lot now. Yes. And yes. I think I'm in better shape now than I was. I'm doing. Th I feel like I'm 20. So I'm that's doing. Great. I, I ran on Friday. Yeah. Just to see what I could do. Yeah. I literally ran a half marathon on tri treadmill. That's great. I ran 13 miles in wow. an hour and 40 minutes. I could never do that. Yeah. Like, ever before in yeah. my life. And there's this wall that you always think you're going to hit. And I let it stop me. Right. For the right. longest time. I'm like, right. oh, yeah. I can't, I can't. Yeah. And then you broke it. And right. then I broke it. You broke through it. And I break it every day. That's because great. Because I know it's nothing. Yeah. And if you just try. Yeah. If you just push yourself. Because I'll tell you right now. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't do drugs. But food, that was my vice. Yeah. Like ice cream. Me too. Cookies. Me too. Sugar addict. Yeah. Yep. It was food. It made me feel good mm -hmm. when I was eating it. Mm -hmm. And it, it took a 
the death of a friend of mine um, who died of a massive heart attack. I'm sorry. Uh, at only 54, and I'm 47, so I'm not far behind. Yeah. To make me realize that we have one body. Yep. We have one body, and it's so important how we take care of it. So I saw him, and I'm like, yeah, I can't do this anymore, and yeah. I just shut it down. Yeah. No, I haven't been through a drive through in a year, and I used to eat that stuff all the yeah, time. Yeah, no, I, I can't remember the last time I had fast food. I cut out all the sugars. Yeah. Now I have a little bit, but yeah. I learned Every from, now and then. from doing this. Yeah. Like before, if I had ice cream, I had to have the whole pint. Right, that's now, the whole thing. I can have a little. I can have two cookies. Right, not six. No, I still can't have two cookies. Oh, I can have two. Cookies. <laughs> I still can't um, have just two cookies. And I can walk away. Right. I couldn't do that. Yeah. Before. Yeah. And once I got all the sugar out of my system. Right. Which was murder. Yeah. For a couple of weeks. How do you how do you, how do you do with shoes? I, I'm dying to know what size shoe you are and how you do with shoes. Depends. Anywhere from a ten and a half to an eleven and a half. All right. Women's. Yeah. Um, on an open, I can do 10 on a close. All right, no, it's not, that's not that bad. Um, no, it's not bad at all. Um, so a lot of people go, oh, it must be easy to go shoe shopping. How many size 11 women are there? I'm like, yeah, when you go to the shoe store, they order 20 size 7s and two 11s. Yeah, yeah, no, it's not easy to find like a size 10 or 11. Yeah, but DSW is pretty good. Burlington uh, is usually pretty good. <laughs> you find out where to go. Oh, yeah, you do. You, you totally know? do. That's the thing. And you online. find out where to go. Online. Do you have, what challenges do you have now as a woman? Clothing wise? Cause it was no, in general. Oh. Um, challenges. I will say it's gotten easier as time has gone on. Yeah. You adapt. You get used to certain, certain things. Yeah, yeah. Um, you feel more comfortable in your body. I guess at first it was fitting in where do I belong you know there are women there are people out there like when I use the restroom I use the ladies room right I go I sit down I pee mm -hmm. sometimes I do worse than that mm -hmm. as people do in the bathroom mm -hmm. um and that's a problem for some people and I can't figure out why that is right because it's a private you're in a stall right you can't right. see what anybody right. has exactly nobody's flashing it around right I'm not, I'm not writing right. my name right. in the snow yeah 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 um, so what business of it, what problem is it for you? Yeah. But some people just have an issue. Um, what were we talking about? Oh, issues. Challenges, just challenges in general. I want to say still sometimes fitting in. Yeah. Still not feeling exactly like I belong. Yeah, yeah. I went to brunch And I yesterday. think, you know, we all feel like that at times. Yeah, but that's why I take solace in that. that you know, a little bit more Other women, sister. But, yeah, but know that everyone's, a, place. a lot of women do. A lot of women do. I, I mean, I would walk into a room and be like, I'm hope, I hope I'm about the fattest person in the room. That would be the first thing I thought of. I and it's horrible, isn't it? It is. I went to brunch yesterday with three mothers, all of trans kids. Yeah. And me. And... Like, at first, because they're all talking about their experience as mothers, which I don't have. Right. Like, I transitioned, but I'm my kid's dad. Right. Like, I, I'm their father. Uh, it sounds actually weird for you to say that, but it's true. I would never say I'm their mother. Right. Because I'm not going to take that what away from them. What do your kids call you now? Well, they don't, because my son is autistic, and I can't really explain who I am to him. Okay. And my daughter and I don't really talk. Okay. So, I, I don't really have to figure that out okay. at this moment. All right. Uh, but, but I know I'm their father. Yes. You know? Yeah. And they have their mother. Right. Um, but but sitting in that conversation and listening to them talk about mothering their kids made me feel out of place a little bit. Mm -hmm. Not because of who I was, just right. because I'm not a mom. Right. Right. Um, but then it, it got to how does it feel to be and so they could give me the perspective on raising a trans kid. Right. And I can give them a perspective on actually being trans. Right. And what it's like to experience it from this angle. And I'm sure that they appreciate it everything you it know, was a really good we, you, we had a couple you, hours we had a lot of yeah fun. it's nice it's it nice that the, because then they have an idea of what's expected you know yeah. depending on how old their kids are yeah so young 12 yeah, 18 see, 20 and yeah. you know it's it's a and it's it's a rough age in between that right yeah. before that you know those teenage years and you know how much of you you really want to put out there because you really are it's like it's like walking around naked and just really being judged and you know, when, when you, like you, like you can keep it on the down low and, 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 and well, deal with it in a way that you feel comfortable with. Well, funny thing is, like if you're gay or lesbian or bi, you can hide that. That's not that hard to hide. Correct. You're, you're in your own skin. When you're trans and you're, it's, it's harder. Yes, definitely. You know? Yeah. Like I couldn't go back to being a guy, the mannerisms and everything I have now. Right. Like that's just not, and I don't want to anyway. Right. 
But what you said a second ago, you know, about being younger, there's a lot of talk now, and depending on where you get your news, you'll hear two totally different sides of the same mm -hmm. coin. Mm -hmm. um, on one side, you'll hear that, uh, you know, they're, they're doing surgeries on, on kids under, you know, minors, yeah. which they don't. Yeah. Um, and my ex-wife and I actually had a conversation about this on Sunday. And you're very good friends these. with your ex-wife. My see second. Her, you my see first. Her second no, wife. You I see, see her, her every week. Sunday, right? Yeah, I do. When I go see yeah. my son. That's cool. And we could talk now, yeah. actually. At first it was hard, but now oh, we get sure. She's great, actually. Yeah. And um, so we talked about it briefly. Yeah. And um, we, we have, we're, we're different. We have different ideologies, obviously. And um, she subscribes to that. You know, she sees, oh, they're doing these things to the kids. Right. I'm like, they're not. And then she asked me a question she never asked me before. She goes, did you know when you were a kid? And that was difficult for me to say to her because yeah. I married her. Yeah. Knowing. Right. But I knew. And I told her. I was honest. Yeah. I said I knew. I also said I, I was afraid and I couldn't do anything about it. I tried to not. Yeah. And I did. I really yeah. did. When I married yeah. her, I didn't do it with the intention of leaving. Sure. I really wanted it to work because yeah. I love her. Like, yeah. You know, it's, you know um, but getting back to the other thing. You know, from a very young age, who you are. You're still trying to figure things out, obviously. But if a child comes to you and says, I'm not a boy, or I'm not a girl, 99.9%, .9 they know. Right. It's a th you just, I knew. Yeah. You yeah. Just, and people don't, who don't, maybe don't deal with it, don't understand right. it, yeah, yeah, don't yeah. believe that. Yeah. But you know. Yeah. It's just, why are you doing anything about it? Oh, because I'm a child. Uh, yeah. And the parents that are out there allowing their children to express their identity. Yes. I applaud them, yeah. and I think they're great. Yeah. And they're we're wonderful people. Because the opposite side of that is depression and anxiety. Sure, sure. Because you have to yes. hide who you are. Yes. And, and then there's high suicide rate, too, yeah. which is heart, Much higher in my population heartbreaking. than the average. Yes. Because of, even even during or while or after, because of because you don't know what to expect. Right. They made me sign a document when right. I started about wow. what hormones would do to you. Yes, yes, We yes. distribute body fat, right. emotional changes. Yeah. But nowhere on it does it tell you how society is going to treat you. Because right. how could it? Right, right. And a lot of people find it hard to make that adjustment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Luckily for me, well, actually, I can't say that because I was hospitalized twice. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wait, I, we, we'll get into that when we get back. Oh. Actually, we're going to take my break. There's some heavy stuff, back, sorry. <laughs> you know, when we come back, you know, but you know what it is? I Listen, I love you as a person, and Same. I love your honesty and, and, and how organic you are and authentic you are. And um, don't go away, people. When we come back, we're going to talk more with Emily Santosis. We'll be right back after this. Wonder Woman was everything to little girls, especially that look like me. She stands for being a voice for people that need a voice. My organization renovates homes for people with disabilities. And when I come home, a self-care routine makes me feel my best. I'm very proud of the difference that we're making and to see that impact in my community inspires me to work even harder for everyone around me. No, How you doing? It's Sal, the voice of Valentinetti. Why are you watching me? You should be watching Teresa Canastracy Tea Time with Teresa Canastracy Farrell. And make sure you, you, you follow Teresa on Facebook, Tea Time with Teresa Canastracy Farrell. We'll see you there. I love the way you say my name. I love Hey everybody, welcome back to Tea Time. I'm so glad you're joining me tonight. I'm with Emily Santosa. She is a stand-up comedian. She's a friend of mine. She's a writer because she writes her amazing, amazing jokes and stand-up. And she touches so many lives in so many different ways. And I just want you to know that, girl. Thank and, you. you know, before the break, you know, she is transgender. She was born a male and now she's a female. And, you know, she's lived both lives and she's very upfront and, and, and honest and about it, about how, you know, her life has changed from living as a guy to living as a girl in many ways. And, you know, you're talking family, you're talking work, you're talking friends, who stays in your life, who leaves. And, 
not only is it a, a physical change, but it's also a mental change. And before the break, uh, she mentioned how she was hospitalized twice. So, um, you know, I want to know what led to that and, 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 you know, how you overcame it. Well, I'm going back a few years now. Um, this is early in the transition. And, uh, before that, we were talking about how some people, the integration in the society as a different gender uh, can be difficult, and it was. And uh, it affected me more, I let it affect me more than I should have. Mm. And uh, Well, it's hard not to take things personally, period. Well, that's true. I mean, in general. And some of it was direct and very hateful. Um, but I could have been stronger. But anyway, it's, it's not about that. Yeah. I, uh, I ended up in a mather for a week. Excellent accommodations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Being transgender, I got my own room. Right. Couldn't bike me with the girls or the guys. <laughs> so I had a private. <laughs> so, sorry. Oh my God. That's so, funny. um, so yeah, um, so there was that and then it happened again uh, about a year later um, and that time was Southside. But that was 2016. Uh-huh. And then I started comedy in 17. That's what I was going to ask you, when you actually started doing stand-up. And that helped because I no longer kept things bottled up. It was almost like a like venting. Yeah, it's like, it's therapy. like, the, it's like therapy. therapy in reverse, yeah, yeah, except yeah. people pay to see me. Right. So instead of paying the therapist. <laughs> I like that. So, so I was able to take all of those negative things, right. punch it up a little bit, tie it in a nice little bow, right. write it down, and send it out on unsuspecting individuals in the audience. And it's been great. And um, don't get me wrong, I was on antidepressants and everything. Yeah, uh, I've I been there, I stopped been those. Yeah. That. yeah. But it was a godsend because, like, I, I just I let it all out. I right. keep nothing in. Right. No, I, I know nothing. you don't. I know you don't. So, um, so yeah, so the hospitalizations were a low point. But, you know, it's, it's part of my journey. Yeah. And I don't know where I'd be if it didn't happen. Because yeah. I got some good things out of it. Well, that's what. I, let's get into it. You said you started in 2016. How did you originally get into stand up? Oh, okay. So stand up. So I was 17. I was March, and I'm home. Oh, 17. Sorry. 17. I'm March. I'm, I'm home. Uh, depression. Yes. And I'm sitting in my bed, going, you know, if I do not get out of this bed and do something, I'm gonna like, you know, yeah, you know. yeah. So I called up, and it was like, oh, you're funny. All my friends, okay, you're funny. It's like I'm funny to you. Right. Exactly. A little in a circle. Put your money where your mouth is, right? Right. So I called the brokerage. Okay. And I'm like, what is this? Stand up university. Stage? No, I didn't do that. You didn't do that. I went right to open mic night. Really? Yeah. Girl. Yep. So it was a. Uh, wow. I had a month to prepare, about three weeks to prepare. So it's Ziegler's open mic. And yes. uh, I love John. He's an awesome dude. Yes. So uh, they say, I say, what do you need? They go, you got to bring six people to get seven minutes. Correct. I tell everybody at work, like 30 people come. I'm like packing my desk. Like, why? I said, if I bomb, I'm not coming back. <laughs> you guys are going to ride me the rest of my life. I'm not coming. So, so I go. I write, I write all my own material. All my own. Yeah. I get there. Have a great night. The jokes, they just land. I mean, I'm, I mean, it's just like, nah, yeah, it's so good. Yeah, yeah. I have audience going nuts. Uh, didn't have to quit my job. Big plus. Um, and that was it. That was it. From then on, I was done. I was, wow. I was in. Uh, then I, I did a show at Frankie's East Side in the vestibule. Because uh -huh. you got to pay your dues, right? <laughs> you got to pay your dues. You, pl you um, know what? You do stand up all over as long as there's a microphone. and you know. There's five people in the audience, four yeah, of them. What are you going to do? Mean, I mean, you know what I mean? But I've uh, I performed on, on at Dange Fields, Broken yeah. Comedy Club. Yeah, you've all been the clubs all over. Here. You've been on every... Really, you've performed in Manhattan. You perform all yeah, over yeah. Long Island, um, and and now you you know and and you, you I I want people to know that um, she has her own website. So if you go to Emily Santosis, it's E M I L Y Emily. Emily comedian. Well, I found it on this one. I might have that domain. I well, might. you do because I was on it. Oh, okay. Well, I'll shut up now. It worked for me when I went on it. Oh, then I have three. I guess I have Emily Okay. I have emilycomedian.com. Okay. And I bought comedian.com. Okay. Just comedian. Okay. So every, um, I know on the emilysantosis.com, I went on that one. And um, 
you can see all her upcoming shows in the month of April. So if you want to check her out in person, please go on the website. Um, she's also on Facebook. You're also on Insta. Oh yeah. As uh, e is EFS 2013. Yeah, and I have a I have a comedy one. I think it's Emily Comedian. Okay. I gotta be honest. I don't know if it's the H thing. I'm really good with Facebook. I know, me I'm really too. I'm kind of okay with Instagram. Me too. Snapchat, I'm like a toddler. I'm not even on it. And I signed up for I'm TikTok. Like I am, but I don't use it. But I refuse to use it. I know. I it's don't cra TikTok. It's, no, it's crazy. It's crazy. I don't TikTok either. I know it's a thing to do that's a hot with the kids. I know, but we're not kids. I know. Well, actually, <laughs> technically, I'm 10. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> So I mean, technically, I could do it. That's great. Sorry. Oh my God, that's great. No, I just like listen. Um, you know, you have a couple of mantras that you go by, and one is respect me, and I'll respect you. Yeah, it's on my page. Yes, which which I I really like, and obviously that's hello. That's like just a given. I mean, really. I mean, you know. I, if you don't mind, I. Uh, so I think it says, uh, liberal transgender girl. With conservative friends. Yeah, I didn't write out the whole thing. Yeah, but <laughs> the point I was trying to make was I am friends with a lot of comedians, and they're, a lot of them are conservative. And there was something that happened recently okay. with a conservative comedian okay. who put a post up on Facebook. Uh -huh. And it was one of these like uh, images where it was like a top and a bottom, and the top is like some guy like flashing a young girl and a mother. And then it, uh, it said, ha ha. And then next to it is like a, a wanted poster of the guy. And then right underneath it is the same guy, big guy, with a trans flag. says, I'm trans. Same mother and daughter. But now the mother is on the wanted poster because she was anti-trans oh. because of that. Okay. And I took offense to that. And it takes a lot to offend me. Mm -hmm. And I'm the last person to tell somebody what they can and can't say. Right, right. But I... Just replied. I said, yeah. "Not for anything. It's not funny. It's offensive. Right. It perpetuates stereotypes about people like me, uh, and a lot of people have never met someone like me, and they make the assumption yes. that that is yeah. correct. Correct. And we're groomers or pedophiles. Yeah. I have kids. You touch my kid, I'm going to jail because I'm going to kill sure. you. Sure. Sure. So I messaged that comedian. Yeah. Or, and right. they took it down. Well, good. To their I mean, look, some people have to be educated, and you know, and if you don't say something, they won't know. I have to. And so somebody said to me, "Why do you stay friends with these people?" So I can call them out when they say stuff like that. Right. And well, again, educate them when yeah, need be. Because if you want to, I'm a comedian. Yes. So First Amendment is a big thing for me. Yes, it is. And I'll never say you can't say anything. Mm -hmm. Some things may be inappropriate. Yes. But I'll never say you can't do it. Right. But at the same time, if you're, if you want to make a joke about trans people, go for it. Put some effort into it, though. Make it funny. Yeah. Stop going for the low hanging fruit. Right, right, right. Because I'll make a joke about people. You know, right, but, but right. Put some effort right, into it. Right. When you make a post like that, you really know just what perpetuating you're perpetuating stereotypes saying. that are completely untrue. Right. And get people like me hurt. Yes. Totally. Or killed. Totally. I totally get it. That's what I take issue with. Yeah. Yeah. I get Sorry, it. I'm getting all serious. No, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> listen, we're gonna uh, take my last. Uh, my last uh, commercial Are break uh, in about thirty <laughs> seconds. Goddamn. And uh, yeah, but we're gonna we're gonna no we're gonna we have to take a last break. Okay. And then we come back. Uh, we're gonna get into it more. So uh, stay right there. Don't go away. More with Emily when we come back. Right after this. Teresa Farrell. Who's got the best radio? Teresa Farrell. Yeah. 
Who's your favorite Jimmy? Teresa Farrell. Who are you loving right now? She's a... <laughs> Teresa Farrell. All right, Chuck. I love you too, baby. Love you as always. Thank you. Hello, thank you, Doc Gooden, my friend. I'm hoping to have Doc back on my show. I want to give some shout-outs to Linda Davides. I'm actually going to be on her show tomorrow night. She's interviewing me tomorrow night. Nice. So tune in tomorrow, 8.30, right here on Strong Island Television. Um, and then Wednesday, I'm, gonna, I'm here all week, people. There, on Wednesday, I'll be back for Laugh to Saves Lives. So tune in to that as well. Um, but thank you for watching. Um, I'm with my friend, comedian, writer, Emily Santosis. Um, you know, everyone has a story. And she has an incredible story that she tells. And, you know, she's living her authentic life now the past, what, 10 years, you said? Uh, almost 11? Almost 11. Almost 11 years. And, you know, this was a very... I'm sure a hard decision and yet brave decision that you made to really live your authentic life. You know, a lot of people would say brave, and at the beginning, I didn't agree with that because I'm yeah, but you have to myself. be. No, but you have to no, be. No, no, no. I came around to think in this in this society that we yes. live in, in this world. Yes. It is now. Yes. I say that, and I don't know if you remember. Uh, a few years ago, they put Caitlyn Jenner. On like woman of the year or brave, yeah. bravest person. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's all big up for us. Like, why right. don't you pick a veteran? Right. And I think veterans deserve every honor. Yes. Um, because they fought for our country. Um, but it's it's not the same thing. I mean, it's just it's not. I mean, it's, it's people just want to create a culture it's, war. It's different. It's just different. But in the world that we live in, it kind of is. Yes. To but me, I'm, gl it, I'm glad that you did get into comedy when you did, and. You found that outlet that you needed Absolutely. to a express yourself, b get th free therapy, and you get paid for it <laughs> instead sometimes, of the other way around. Sometimes. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, that's the other thing. You know, um, how do you find? Obviously, you didn't do comedy as a as a male. So, yeah. how do you find comedy as do, doing comedy in general as a female? Because I know I've been doing this since the early eighties, uh, early nineties. It's a lot less of us than there are guys. Yes. And I am in a very, 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 very small. Yes. I think I know two other trans comics. Right. Right. Um, one's in the city. Well, I had Julia on my show. Scotty. Yes, Julia uh, Scotty Julia. was on my show. I performed with her once. Isn't she great? She is amazing. She's amazing. And she talks about m many other topics. She yes. touches on the trans yes. thing at the beginning. Yes. And then, goes and then off lets on it go. Stuff. I hawk on that thing all night. <laughs> uh, that's my thing. Uh, that's your thing. But um, she's and stay awesome. true to yourself. That. Yeah. But she she did my show virtually. Obviously, she's not in New York, but she's killing it. They're doing a documentary on her. Yeah, she's great. She's amazing. Yeah. And amazing fun. Where did you work with her? Well, so there was a thing for um, Long Island Transgender Resource Center, and it was at I want to say St. Luke's. Maybe it's uh, I think it's Pasco. Oh, really? It's up one of these. How roads. long ago was that? <laughs> While no. Two. 18, 19, Yeah, I was going to say it was a while Pre-COVID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was new at it. Yeah. And uh, I go up and uh, I, you know, I'm nervous. And she goes up and she's just like natural. I know. Oh she's God. great. She could do it in her sleep. Yes. Yeah, yeah. She's been doing it a long time. She has. And she, she performed has. She started, prior to transition yes, as well. She started as a male. I have only known it from this angle. Right. Um, but I love it. I yeah. do. It's, it, yeah. If you... Like I tell my my friends or people, yeah. and I have to tell you, I met you when you first started doing stand up. Okay, and you've come a long way. I mean, a long way from being relaxed yeah. on stage. Because in the beginning, in the beginning, everyone is a little tense yeah. and everyone's a little nervous, and you know, no pun intended, but being comfortable in their own skin yeah. on stage. I eat before I go on stage now. Yeah. I could never you do see, that I know, I, but I still don't. I couldn't. I, I couldn't. still don't. I don't eat or drink before I hit the stage. The funny thing is, is I had the voice surgery in September of 21. Yes. And I was performing up until July. Right. I wanted some time off in case COVID, you know, whatever. Yeah. And all the way, every time, yeah. nervous, like go to the bathroom like 10 times. <laughs> then I had surgery, so I'm out for a year and a half. Right. I come back thinking I'm going to be even more nervous. Right. Nervous one away. I just get up. And I just go, and now I eat. It's crazy. Yeah. I get like on a big show, I might get a lot, like butterflies. Right, right, right. But I don't get that. It's that, not like it was in the beginning. Sense of doom. Yeah, you know, I don't. <laughs> I, it's like, oh my god, it's gonna die. I don't, I don't have that oh now. My god. Now I just get like the butterflies. Like, oh, I hope this goes well. Yeah. It's yeah. Just, I don't know what happened. Yeah. But it changed. It was awesome.
Because well, you, again, the more you do it, the more you get comfortable. That's, that's true. what it is. That and you is do, true. you do a lot of shows. And again, go to emilysantosis.com or go to her Facebook page. She's constantly posting when she is, you know, doing shows. And again, you can see all her upcoming shows in April. Um, I don't know, girl. We have, we have, I, I, it's I hard to read that thing because there's a I think thing I want to say it. 55 seconds. Yeah, we have like a minute left, real quick. So, um, lightning round. <laughs> lightning round. No, just before we leave, because we got to go real quick. Is there anything that you're looking to do in the future that you haven't done yet, whether it's comedy or doing other things or writing well, maybe a memoir or, you know? I don't know about a memoir. I do remember I won John Butera's contest yes, back did. before COVID. Yes. And I was supposed to film a movie. Okay. Uh, Gender Bender 2, believe it or not. Yes. Just go figure. Yeah, I, I heard that might be yeah. happening. Yeah, so I'm supposed to be in that. All right, cool. So I'm looking forward to that if it happens. All right. Uh, other than that, uh, starting school. Yeah, that's exciting. I am very excited. I'm also very nervous because <laughs> it's been a long time since I studied. It's been a long time since I was in school, too. Well, yeah. listen, I want to I wanna thank you so much for coming thank you in for having me. tonight. And, you know, my door's always open. So, you know, whenever you have something to plug or talk about. You come back. Thank you. Um, I want to thank everyone for watching Tea Time, supporting me. Um, listen, everyone, um, tell everyone you love you, love them, and I'll see you next week. Ciao, everybody.